Hi my dreamers and welcome back to Dynaline Wist and the Dreamcatcher where we talk display in the media and the world around us. On today's podcast I did a written interview with Kuria who is the creator of the Disability Archives. So without further ado, let's begin. So what is the archive I hear you ask? The archive is an interactive collection of dis- able literature. It is not a library but rather a detailed listing of over 200 books with detail regarding serious information, disabilities, authors, genres and much more. And the first question I asked to her was what made you want to do the disability archive? She said a lot of things honestly. I had a big paragraph about how it started as a way for me to archive disability aids then became about books where I was struggling to find some essays in university. Chiefly it started when I was looking to make a new resource on my main blog. I have a couple of posts where I collect information on disability aids and supplies around the world and I wanted to make another one after seeing how much it helped people so I started looking for a issues I could help with. I decided on books. After reading Six of Crows, gifted to me by a friend, purposely because it had a disabled p- protagonist, a relief I couldn't think of really any other book or media with canonical dis- disabled characters. I made the disability book archive as it is now after I came across a blog that I had been archiving LGBT plus books since the start of the pandemic. I thought that it was a brilliant idea and it was a shock to me that I couldn't find more like that for disabled literature. And I just want to say like discovering the disabled archive book quite, quite recently it's amazing so much love and work goes into the archive and it's so incredible and i can't wait to see it grow and see what becomes of it because it is a amazing thing and i the other question that i asked was uh, what's your goal with the archive? She said, I wanted to create an area where people can easily find whatever disability book slash information and representation they are looking for, even if they don't r- realise at the time without having to source every corner of the libraries. And I do feel that. An internet without promise of result. I also wanted to create a space that really highlights the books and authors that have had an impact on the disability community as well. I don't think I've ever really understood the importance of seeing yourself represented in books and media until being given books that my friend had bought for me specifically for having a disabled character. Like, I know it's important, of course, but I've never been truly excited about a character in a book until Six of Crowns. It references how the main character's pain gets worse in the winter because the cold gets into his leg or how the cane that the MC of Iron Widow uses this trips and slips on the floor sometimes and it, it's all stuff that happens and happens to me and it's just filled with me with such joy I want it to become something where people can find themselves so they can have that too. And I relate to this message so much. It's important to see yourself in media, in the world. Especially, especially when you're young. You know, I remember reading me before you for the first time. And I know it's not the best representation, but after I read it, 
this was in primary school I was like there has to be other books and I could not find that and it made me so sad and angry <laughs> because why can't we be the hero why do we always have to be portrayed as the villain or not portrayed at all and it really got to me and discovering the archives recently just brings me so much joy because knowing that it will help so many kids and young adults accept the disability and no this the disability but we'll get into that later on <laughs> and why I'm crying but um yeah I asked her you recently um it was recently Pride Month and they have their own pride section. I asked why is it important for um why is it important for people to see that the disability community is a part of the LGBT community? Because it is, a lot of people forget that we have those sorts of relationships too, that we love who we love and I know a lot of people don't understand how can a person with disability love and we can we can love and we love just like anybody else and I'm going to get emotional again and she, she said the idea mentioned above but also because pride in itself can be notorious inaccessible for the disabled pride might, may not be COVID safe Events may not be alternated, etc. It's hard to feel part of the community when you have to work twice, maybe even three times as hard to actually be seen it. It's easy to then start to feel like maybe you just don't have a place in at all. This just isn't true and honestly defeats the whole purpose of Pride of the Pride movement. And it's true, as someone who's always wanted to go to Pride, but knowing it's not exactly safe and we're not exactly seen as a part of the community, although it's got better, it's still not enough. Like, I want people to know we're also a part of the LGBT community and as someone who is exploring their sexuality it's important to have these sorts of books to help discover who you are as a person. I asked her would you what would you like to see to turn it into a movie or TV show? And she said, Oh that's a good question. I would have liked to have seen what the Six of Crows TV series could have been. The right same it was cancelled and I know that I am you know, it's possibly being adapted into a movie. So I really hope that turns out well. I think I think definitely Doomsday and it follows up Rebuild Tomorrow could be an interesting TV series. Premise of disabled people in different apocalyptic situations also has so much potential. There's so much that could be done beyond the book and its sequels.
and this month of July, this is Disability Pride Month, what does that mean to you and how do you celebrate? Disability Pride Month to me has been learning how to come to terms with the fact that I am in fact disabled. I've always thought that I just accepted being disabled considering this is the way I was born and there was nothing I could do about it. Well, I hadn't. The last couple of years have made me realise that I had so much trauma and grief about it that I've never addressed. When I was introduced to the Disability Pride Month movement, I've always wondered how you could be proud of being disabled. But I've realised now that that's not all it is about. It's about showing both of the world and yourself that there is nothing shameful about being disabled. No, there isn't. And it's that it's not our fault that the world isn't designed to accommodate or our existence. The first year I learned about disability pride, I'd, I spent a lot of time researching it and began being anxious of showing anything about it. I realise now that that's a lot of that was down to my own internal ableism and over lack of understanding about the importance of the movement. It makes me happy to see just how much it has grown in three years and to know that I have been a part of it will continue to, to be, only to continue to be as it only gets bigger. <laughs> now <laughs> anybody who's a bookworm knows that this question is really difficult to answer. And at first, when I was writing the questions, I thought, let me just ask her what the favorite her favorite book is. But then I was like, no, it's a book. <laughs> That's almost impossible. That is impossible to ask a bookworm. So I was like, top ten. What are your top ten favorite books? <laughs> um. <laughs> so I am sorry for putting you through that, but um, so here are, are here's her answers. She says just ten. She says Six of Crows, Foot Kingdom, both by Le Bardog. I just love them. The hijack, the humor, the general heartbreak. Ugh. and the disability rest, addiction, PTSD, etc. Paradise of uh, Pebble of Snorley by Oscar Octavia E. Butler. This is generally one of my favourite books. It is not all usually the type of thing I read. I read a lot of science fiction, but not often at this level of dystopia. But it's so captivating. I will say some of the themes are quite heavy to handle. So I recommend checking the content warning. She and a Cat by Margot Signing and No Cara Wake I don't know if you'll just disability really books for this. This is honestly such a hard book and that's not even a lot of really upsetting stuff I, it just really hit me a lot of stories I could relate to as someone who learned to manage the depression because of their cats it's just so sweet and so warm and just amazingly honestly what happened to you by James Catapult Catapult it's a children's picture book, but I was generally excited when I saw it. I jumped at the chance to read it. It's a key story, time, event, and it sends me down a rabbit hole of disability representation in children's books. It's physical disability and 
in British Romance Literature by Essie Doomed, a non-fiction selection. This is something I think is very important, both very important and a great read. The particular great essay I think is on disability in Frankenstein, which is incredibly interesting. Frankenstein was a modern poem by Mary, by Mary Shelley. I read this book about seven times cover to cover for various reasons and by the third time it had grown on me. 8. The Immortal Life of Harrietty Harrietty Becky by Rebecca Scott. It's no secret that I have some issues with the author writes this book but I do generally enjoy it. And the story of Arietti and her family is something that means for more recognition, giving the story significance. Next is Cinder by May. More of a title favourite than anything. I loved the Chronicles when I was younger. It's one of the first young adult series I've ever read. This is one of the first books I can read. Remember reading with an actual disabled character in it. Feeling by Kate O'Reilly. Something. Something introduced. Someone introduced me this book to me when I was really taking some minutes for the archive. It was a black comedy play commissioned by the by the Grace Theatre Company. It is quite. It, it is quick but very interesting read. It looks at the idea of disability in older women and representing of disability in disability characters on the stage and it really leaves you with something to think about. Again, I would just I just sincerely apologise for making you pick your top ten. I, as a bookworm myself, I struggle to even, yeah. So the fact that you were able to pick ten, I commend you, but I'm still very apologetic. I am truly sorry. I asked her then, what was the next step for you in the archive? So recently I've been looking into making an Instagram and or co-host account to try and reach more people. I have speaking to one of my lecturers and they also post proposed the idea of possibly going to some libraries and seeing if they would like to advertise it and or into maybe you choose a resource to the that's definitely something I would like to look at further into right now I'm focusing on adding more books. I've fallen behind the last couple of weeks while I was finishing my course so I'm happy to get back into it. At some point I was also thinking of possibly including other disability media as well although that is that is a venture for the future. I then asked her the question that is probably the second most difficult to answer for a book one. Um, and it's this. Um, was what story would you like to be seen covered regarding disability? And that was I like to be able to find stories that cover my disability. I've been able to find a lot of stories that focus on rare disabilities and the effects they have on people's lives, which is just fantastic. But at some point, I like to find one about people like me. I like to see some more stories about disability around the world. 
I have quite a few at the moment, which that I'm very proud of, but I feel like a lot of the books are very western centred and I would like to have some more that focus on disability in parts of the world other than New York, Canada and the US. This is it. And then I asked, if you could go into any book, what would it be and why? And she said, oh, interesting. If you would like to recommend, um, oh, interesting. I have to say, how to train your dragon book and movie series since I was a kid. So probably those books. A snarky protagonist, Viking dragon, how is humour? I mean, what's not to love? I said, final question, would you like to add anything? I said, so, I've been listening to a few episodes of your podcast while I've been answering your questions and I think you're doing a great job. Actually, a few of your early episodes around disability in Sims and two theory of comics bring up a lot of things that I used to think about a lot as well. I'm really happy to see other people talking and that <laughs> made me emotional. <laughs> Because, uh, if I'm being honest, um, there have been times where I was like, especially when it's been really difficult, um, Emotionally, and trying to find stories. Um, this has taken so much of me, and I was one. Especially in the early days. I was wondering if anybody would listen to what I had to say. And knowing that there are people that are listening, like my friends and people outside of my friends, It really means a lot, and to know that I'm not alone. The disability community is the most fantastic, amazing community there is. And I'm not saying that because I'm biased. I'm saying that because it's true. You know, we don't know what's going to happen. But I do know that having a community, having people on the same wavelength as you and understanding you for not just your disability but you as a whole an amazing feeling and it's something that I will cherish for a long time and I just want to say a big thank you to the um, Curio, who let me ask these questions and um, being super kind and super generous with her time. Okay, she didn't have to me. <laughs> she could have just said, No, I'm good. But she didn't. She took the time to really answer my questions. And the work she has done 
really incredible i like please 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 i'll put the link in the description check it out there's also if you know of any disability literature you can recommend it to uh, through the disability archives it's so so fun to look at all these books and it's so easy as well you can go by disability or you can go by LGBTQ representation and it's laid out it's got the front cover of the book the author the genre if it's part of a series what disability is being represented in the books and if there is an LGBTQ theme as well in the book it lets you know also what part of the LGBTQ um, community is also being represented and it tells you the blurb and um, all it tells you the trigger warning if there is any and um, tells you any other information about the book or if Kyrie has read the book she will say her thoughts which I find really helpful <laughs> So I would just like to say a big thank you to Curie for letting me interview her and um, again eternally grateful and I'm so so glad <laughs> glad I just got read the disability archive <laughs> my bank account probably isn't because <laughs> there's so much books I want to read now <laughs> and um yeah, happy Disbelief Pride Month and then on the next week's podcast um, I will upload the next um, chapters of Pearls of Yesterday so that's coming next week hopefully and um, I've also found some disability romance books on the interwebs on Amazon and Waterstone so I'll be talking to you about that as well and yeah for this D disability pie month I'm going to focus on the media side of things and maybe a bit about what's going on and I found something really cool but I'm going to buy it first then I'm going to show you guys I promise you it's super cute and adorable and I love it. Okay, with that being said, goodbye my dreamers, dream big, you deserve it.